Okay, welcome back from spring break. I see everybody is uh, raring to go here. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, I guess there is a homework assignment that's due today. And it was just to modify. It was a big modification. It was to modify the parser program to read hexadecimal numbers. Oh yeah. So are we? How are we did to? It was to modify the the, the integer parse to be able to parse hexadecimal yeah. values. So did everything all work out okay? I have a question on the. Um, on the assignment, it has like two upper, two lower. Like, yeah, those that you know. Could be helpful. Yeah, you know all so those. Do we have to do those? No, 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 no. I mean, no. Okay. Remember, as I explained before, the book is written for C plus mm plus. -hmm. We're doing it in Java. Mm -hmm. Those are C plus plus methods that mm -hmm. uh, you right. might want to be able to use if you were doing the project in C plus plus. Then you, I just listed those to as a as a reference to help. As you need. I didn't know if we had to like use them. No, 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 no. I wanted to ask, what are the states that are built in? Because you gave us the the program for just the integer parser. Well, you know the okay. Let's go back to I, the. I, I, I looked at this like yesterday. This week. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so let's take a look here yeah. at Figure Seven Point Twenty Six. Okay, so this is programmer defined. St this is a programmer defined class. Okay, and it's in file state.java. And um, so anytime you have a variable of type state, capital S state, or that has class, capital S state, th it, these are the values that it can take on. And so our uh, programming convention is to, is to have all enumerated values be all uppercase. By the way, I made a comment on some of the homework I gave back earlier that um, Style-wise, that's a common programming style in C and Java languages, and so, um, so, and then because there will be several enums in the project going forward, we prefix it with s underscore, so so that you can see just by looking at it that that's a state variable. So, but you, you name those. This is programmer defined. Right. So you name you name your states accordingly. Were these IFM, were those just from the figure? Yeah, those were just from the figure, yeah. I, F, and M, so it'd be S, I, and, and then you always have to include this extra stop. Right. And that stop is what terminates, so you never do a switch on with a case stop, because once you set the state to stop, then that last, um, yeah, the test to, at the bottom of the loop to terminate the loop. Is if stop. Yeah, yeah. While, stop. while, yeah. Okay. Are we, is everybody good? Any more questions? I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty straightforward. All right. So now, let's move ahead. Now, the next uh project that we're going to do is, actually let me, I'll, I'm, I'll demo this <coughs> in a minute, but let's take a look, uh, let's take a look at figure 7.28 here for a second. The next uh, demo that we're, going, uh, that we're going to give you is, and, and the next example that we're going to give you is this finite state machine shown in figure 7.28. Now, How many final states are there in this finite state machine? Three. There are three. Those three states are start, ident, and int. All right? Now, which means that probably, this is probably a multiple token recognizer. So how many tokens do you think it can recognize? It is probably a multiple token recognizer. So how many tokens do you think it can recognize? Three. How many? Endless. No, three. Okay. If it ends in the state ident, what do you suppose that I, what do you suppose it recognized? Identifier. An identifier. If it ends in the state int, it probably recognized an integer. But what if it ends in the state start? It's a blank. Yes. 
it will be, and we will call that the empty token. Now, remember, what is the definition of a token? It's like proof of the definition of a token. Characters. Well, yeah, but in general, what is it? A string of terminal characters yeah. that has meaning as a group. A string of terminal characters that has meaning as a group. All right. And by the way, do you suppose this, can you tell by looking at this, if this is a simplified, is this a simplified finite state machine, yes or no? Yes. It is. Because, how, and how can you detect that? It doesn't have any of the... Uh... Yeah, what's the lines in between called? Yeah. Um, Transitions. Transitions. Okay, so, and what, what's your observation? In order, if, if it, it has the acceptable transition. Right, right. So in order for it to not be simplified, you would have to have a transition from every state on every character. But it doesn't, so therefore it's simplified. So we will impl implement this using the direct code technique. Is everybody good? Okay, and next question. Is this deterministic or non-deterministic? Deterministic, and how can you tell that? First, the first thing, first thing, how can you tell right away it would be non-deterministic if it had what kind of transition? Empty. Yeah, an empty transition. It doesn't have that. But on the other hand, it could be non-deterministic even without the empty transition every, if it had... Every state only has a single one transition for each input. Right. There's never any choices. If you're in a state and you get a character, there's only one, one other state that you can go to. Or you could fail. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So okay, so it's deterministic, it's simplified deterministic, and we will implement it using a the direct code technique. So um, so do you do you see then that at the at the beginning we at the start state we have um, it can recognize a bunch of spaces, right? So do you see then that, that takes care of the of the leading space? Mm -hmm. Any leading spaces? And then, after a few leading spaces, if there's a letter, that will take us to the ident final state. And then on the ident final state, we can either have a letter or a digit, keeping us in that ident final state. And then if we, all right, is everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, if, if after a few leading spaces, we get a plus sign or a hyphen, that'll take us to sign state, after which if we get a digit, that'll take us to the int state. Or, starting from the start state, we could go to the int state right away without a leading. And then the int would give us the digit, yeah? And so what this will do is this is combining those, uh, a multiple token recognizer. And what do you suppose we'll be, we'll, we'll be doing with the int? Not only will we, will we be parsing it, but what will we be doing with the int? Do you suppose? Like we did last time? Oh, converting it to an actual integer. Yeah, converting it to an actual integer value. Yeah? And, check this out you guys, not only that, <clears throat> now, what are the three stages of the uh, translation process? Three stages, how does a translator work? What, what are the three stages of, a tra of the translation process? Well, a prog actually, a prog what, do, what, does, okay, what, do, what does a program, what do all programs do? They do what? Take, Take input, input process, process it, yeah. output. Now I'm talking about the processing part. The processing part for a translator has three distinct stages. Do you remember what they are? The tokenizer. The tokenizer, also called the lexical, lexical analyzer. analyzer. That's the first part. The second part is what? The parser. The parser, and the third part is what? Generator. The code generator. Okay. So now, let's focus on that first part. The first part was the tokenizer. So what does the tokenizer supposed to do? Recognize tokens. Yeah, recognize tokens. And it does it, it has to do it over and over and over again. Are you with me? What this is going to do is, not only, this is not just going to recognize one token. It's going to recognize a whole, well, it's going to recognize a whole string of tokens. You see? And then it's going to go to the next line and it's going to recognize a whole string of tokens. And it's going to go to the next line it's going to recognize a whole string of tokens. Okay? So that's what 
So, so that's, that's what our, the next demo is going to show. In fact, I wonder if we shouldn't, I need a chair. Yeah, go ahead and do the demo. Now that we see the, now that we see this, let's do the demo. All right. Okay. Okay, so here's our demo. So what we'll do is we'll just run it right away. And now you guys, check this out. We have a nice not just a little one line box here. We have a big old yeah, <laughs> and down here, we're, we're, we're going to say parse, okay? So now, um, watch this. We need to do, oh, here it is. Okay, so here we are <laughs> in figure 7.31, and check this out. We're going to, um, I copied this string. So look at this, uh, look at this string of input. It says, what does it say? Here, H-E-R-E, -E, and then we got, you know, space, 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 is space A47 space 48B. Are you with me? And we go to the next line, and so notice that there's no trailing space at the end of that line. Are you with me? And then we go to the next line, and now what do we have? We have some leading spaces, right? And then we have C, oh, and three leading spaces. And then we have C hyphen 49 space A long identifier space plus 50 space D16 hyphen 51. Yeah. All right? Now, you guys, think about it. What tokens is this program recognizing? Start. Identify. Start, which recognizes an empty one, an empty one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and what else? And that fire. So, what do you think it should recognize in going? Because it's going to do, it's going to do the, you know, over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, what's it going to do? Token. And, and so, what will this? What will this H E R E B? Identify. That'll be an identifier. What do you think will be this? Empty token. No, this will not be empty. Why not? Why won't this be empty? Because it's all one long string. It's going to take it as is. It's, it's the leading spaces in front of the is. Yeah. Are you with me? So now, that's, that's an important... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah it, it'll, it'll be... It will, it will space space in that start space, but then it will go when it sees the is, and that'll be another one. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then space... This, now, if this space were not here, then what would happen? If this space right here were not here... What would happen? That would, it would go straight into it, it would ISA would all be one. All right. Mm -hmm. But now, what do you think? What do you think will happen with this forty-seven? Will that be an integer? No. No. What will that be part of? The A forty-seven. Mm -hmm. Will it be space A forty-seven? No. no this space will be the leading space for this A. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Sorry. Well, I mean, but the, but the but the the token itself will not include the leading space. Oh. Are you with me? The leading spaces are not included in the token. Are you with me? Okay, so A and then 4 and then the space. But now, what about this 48B? Will that be an invalid identifier? Now, this is important. Let's think about this. What about this? Will that be an invalid identifier? Yeah. Anyone disagree? Unless they just stopped it and the next one would be B. 48B shouldn't be. Don't they have to start with the letter? So, uh, so my question is, when it takes... Uh, okay. From the integer to the... Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless it reaches we, as an integer and then it identifies? Yeah, when, well, what do you think it should do? Do you think it should, do you think these three should be an invalid identifier, or do you think this should be a, an integer followed by an identifier with just B? The integer followed by the That is, right, that's correct. So what it will do is it, it should do this 4, 8, and then as... And then when it gets to the B, now here's the crucial thing. When it gets to the B, what state will it be in? What state will it be in? What, after it, as it does this 4, 8, it'll be in the integer state. Okay, but then when it gets this B, there is no transition on a B. And so what it should do is it should return the 48, right? But now, what should the, what, what happens to this B here? Yes, that it should be used 
the next time around and be recognized as an identifier. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think happens when you get to the end of the line? Access the space? Probably. Is this bleeding well, it'll it'll stop with the B. So oh, because it's an enter, so it's different. And L. Actually, it just restart. Yeah, we it, it's going to go to the start of the next line. Now, does everybody is everybody with me that an assembly language program it is line oriented? Mm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So we have to have the ability to go from one line to the next line when we tokenize. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah, so what happens then is this. I'll tell you this. It's not obvious from looking at this. What it should do is, when it's at the end of the line, it should recognize the empty token. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. That empty token will be the end of the line. Is everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. So then it, will co it comes here, and then, and then what will it do? Leading spaces. And so the... And will, the, and will these eating spaces be the empty token? No. 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 To see, become an identifier, but the dash, we don't know if that's part of the language. Yeah, it is. There's a transition with that. So C would be an identifier. Uh, so, C so C would be an identifier. And, and then, then negative 49 would be negative. And then the hyphen 4 and 9 should be the negative 49. And then leading. And then the leading space separates this 9 from this A. And, long identifier, and then A long identifier. Are you with me? It's a very long identifier. Okay. And then space, space the and then plus five zero should be fifty, integer. and then a space, and that, yeah, that would be an integer. And then what about this D sixteen? That's an identifier. Yeah, but wait, is it D and then integer sixteen? No, D sixteen, and then the hyphen five one. Now what about these? And then what about that em uh, empty token? Empty. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Drum roll. Let's get some space here. So the only empty tokens are the line keys? Yes. OK, are you ready for this, sports fans? Parse. Bloop. Ready? Now check it out. What is, what is the output? Identifier equals here. Identifier equals is. Identifier equals A47. Are you with me there? Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, integer equals, four, and so it says that what, what it recognized. Integer 48, identifier B, empty token. Integer, f oh, A47, the 47 is included in that, right? Mm -hmm. Is everybody good? Mm -hmm. And then C, hyphen 49, integer, A long identifier, and then 50. Well, so, to the class? Well, it just makes it yeah, remember it's converting it to the integer right. value so it doesn't store, I mean, Process. yeah. Yeah. Is the yeah. Is everybody good? Mm -hmm. And then the D sixteen, the minus five one, and then the empty token. Now, now look. What do you suppose would happen? Did you notice here that? What do you suppose would happen if I, instead of having this here, if I delete that? It's just gonna have one empty token. It would just have one empty token because what does this empty token? What is this empty token? That's the, That's the empty token at the end of this, and then what's this empty token? That's the empty token here. And then, when I had this return in here, this empty token was this. So look, actually, let me put a few more in here. Boom, boom. So does it always have an extra one? Yeah, actually, maybe to make this illustrative, what I should do is this. Okay, and I can even put some spaces here if I want. Now watch what happens if I parse this. What will be the only difference? Two oh, that was kind of hard to see. <laughs> let me clear this. Uh, because it had more than one. Mm -hmm. OK, so here, so here we go. Boom. So you see empty, topo, empty token, empty token. That was the empty token for this blank line. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have no like, returns in the last line. It'll always have an empty token. Yeah, check this out. Now we have no returns at the end of the last line. But we still, and let me clear this. But now watch what happens. We still have that empty token at the end of this line, even with nothing there. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Now, every you have, we have to understand what this does. All those little details, and the big detail. One of the one of the big details was what? One of those big details was what? Here, when we did four, eight, and then B, that B got. Even though it would, it would 
even though 48B would have been an illegal identifier, 48 is a legal integer, and we have to be able to get the B the next time when we go to get the next one. Are you with me? Is everybody clear on this? Is every return a new integer? <clears throat> yes. In fact, let's let's clear this, and so see we could actually. Oh, well, it's more here. So parse. See the, all of them. Okay. Is everybody good? All right. Now, now here's another feature of our tokenizer. Our other, another feature of our tokenizer is that it's it's got to be able to handle um, errors. All right. So now, so now watch this demo. Now look, you guys. What does this say? Here, space, space, space is A47. All right, so, so, so far so good, but now what happens? We got a plus, and what did the user do by mistake? Put a space in here. All right, now, is 47 plus a valid identifier? No. Or a valid integer? No. But 47 is a valid integer, right? Mm -hmm. But the plus is a valid character, but then what about that space? No, it's an error. So watch how this, watch watch how it does this. Now look what it did. It did identifier equals here is A47, and now check out the behavior here. This is going to be very important for your project. What it does is it does syntax error. Now when it gets a syntax error, what does it do? It goes, it's, it, 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 once you get a sentence, once this is designed, this lexical analyzer, this tokenizer, is designed so that once it get, gets the first syntax error, it goes to the end of the line. Are you with me? So whoosh, it goes to the end of the line, and then it picks up on the next line. Is that because it's hard to determine where it should go back? Yeah, in? yeah, okay. yeah. Plus, in assembly language, once you have an error in, a, in the line, you've missed the, you've missed the whole, you've missed that, that yeah. So it's, it's where it first detects the error, it then scans to the end of the line and then goes to the start of the next, and then starts scanning again. And so the C plus 49 works as, as advertised with, you know, correctly. C, 49, empty token, empty token because of that extra space. And then a long identifier and then a bunch of empty tokens because we had a bunch of spaces here. Yeah? yeah. Does everybody see how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. So that's the end of our demo. Okay, now... Um, what, we're gonna, what I'm going to show you next is um, a, a utility that you can just copy and paste into your project. Um, this is, um, what, what I have here is, for you is a Java class. It's called an input buffer. And those features that we saw in the demo are this buffer, this input buffer, you should use just as it is, as is. I mean, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel, um, and you can you can just you can just use this imp this input buffer. Okay, so what this input buffer is used for is it's used to process one character at a time from a Java stream string, as if from an input stream. So this software, this this little uh, input buffer software, is what it does is it takes one character at a time from the input stream and it provides a few special features. Now do you remember what the um, do you remember what what was the one where we had the what was it 40 something B? What, what were the 47B? Was it 47B? And here's the thing, the, the, four, the, the one to remember was the, in the example was the 47, 47B. Because, and, and um, here's the feature that this input buffer is going to provide. So here's what happens. You scan, oh here, let's remember 47B. Now look, let's go to the finite state machine. Here's the finite state machine. So imagine what happens when we, when we start. We, when we go to the start. If we go to the start and we get a 4, where does that take us? To, to int. And then the 7 takes us to the int. 
Now, here's what, hap here's what happens. We're at the 7 and we're in the int. Are you with me? So the next thing we do is we scan the B. So here, we were, we were at the 4, then we were at the 7. I was sorry, we scanned the 4 and we went from here to here, scanning the 4. And then we went from the 7 to here, mm -hmm. scanning the 7. And then we went from here to here, scanning the B. Mm -hmm. Once we get the B, what do we conclude? There is no transition from B. Mm -hmm. or there, sorry, there is no transition from int on B. Right. But does that mean that we have failed? No. no, because once you are in a final state, you can never fail. Right. Why not? Because you have, once you're in that state, you have detected something. that You have detected that token. You can, end right there. you can just end right there. But if you end right there, what do you have you to do? You need to be able to use B. Because what you do, you, you, every time you get the next token, you go, you go back to the start state. Yeah. Are you with me? So what you have to do is, check this out, you guys. You have to have a way to back up. Okay. You have to have a, we have to have a way to back up the input. Now this, this characteristic is so common in parsing. This is a very common parsing situation. All lexical analyzers have this, you know, what, what we have illustrated here with this parsing. All parsers have this problem of having to analyze and then go back because once it scanned this, you have, yeah, you have to find out those there, but then, whoop, that might not, oh, that doesn't work. But on the other hand, this was correct, but now I need this one for the next time, the next go around. Because you, you see uh, with this figure 728, each time we do uh, the next token, we start over right. in this. Now, yeah, are we good? So this, this, all this is very basic fundamental parsing techniques. So the last bullet here. The, our input buffer has to have the ability to back up a character into the input stream after being scanned. Now here's how we're going to do it. On the other hand, you know, we're, we are implementing our, our, um, our uh, translation in Java, so we're going to have to use Java strings, and we have to use Java coding to do this, right? So check this out. Here is, on figure 7.27, is our file named in buffer.java. Now this doesn't correspond to figure 727 in the book because the book is written for C++. So this is the Java version of it. Yeah? So check this out. What attributes does a buffer have? So here is, this is in buffer. So here's in buffer. That's the name of the class. What kind of a diagram is this? UML and these are the and so what attributes are in here? Uh, in string. In string. In string and that's of type string. Okay, so so that's going to be you know that string. But wait a minute. Um, well, okay, that's in string. This and now what's another what's another one here? Line. line. Okay, so line and what is its type? String. It's also type string. Now, what do you suppose the difference is going to be between in string and line? One's going to be back. What do you suppose this in string was in those examples that we did? The one closest. Hmm. What is the? What do you suppose the in string? Hmm. It's whatever we're reading, right? Like the current? No, I feel line is what we're reading. Mm, yeah. Why, why? Why do you? Can you tell by the names here? You, Okay, well here's what happens. You know, what happens when you click the button? Parse. You parse the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So here's, here's the story. You click the button, it's going to parse the whole thing, right? Oh. So what it does is this end string is the whole... Okay. That's the whole thing that you're parsing. And then this line is what? The line. That you're An individual line from within, because you notice how it went from line to line. And that's what's going to happen with your assembler, because your assembler is line oriented. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then what else do we have? Uh, line index. And what is that? Yeah, line index. And that is of type int. And what do you suppose that will be? That'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, just like we did previously with a single line. So now we're just generalizing, making it more. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Is everybody good? Okay. And then 
what comes in, and these are all private, I guess, huh? Minus, minus, minus. And then what do we, and now what else, now? What else do we have? Yeah, okay, so the next line says, says public in buffer string string. Now what is, hmm, what's the name of this method? In buffer. And what's the name of the class? It's a constructor. It's also in buffer. So anytime you have a method with the same name as the class, what is that? That's the constructor. Are we good? Mm -hmm. And what do we give the constructor? A string. A string, right? And basically, what does it do? What does this constructor do? Whatever string we give it in the constructor, what does it do to it? You can see it right there on the code. Yeah, and what's the plus? Oh, concatenates. It's, it concatenates. And so what does it concatenate onto the string that we give it? Two inlines. Two inlines. Now, why, does it, why do you suppose it concatenates two inlines? That's just in case, because remember one of those examples? We, there was no return at the end of the last line, and it still worked. Yeah. Hmm. Are you with me? So what does this guarantee? The length equals zero. Right? This guarantees that there will be an, an yes, that there will be, the, that the last token will have length zero. Right. Two end lines? Yes. Why? <laughs> One, to guarantee that each line ends with a new line. Are you okay, with me? Sure. And the other one, to guarantee that the last line has z zero length. Okay. Oh. Uh, do you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So look, because, we, because you, know, you don't want to require the user to always, you shouldn't say to the user, oh, by the way, this only works if you put a return at the end of your file. I mean, that would be way user unfriendly, right? So we will guarantee that whatever the parser gets ends with at least two consecutive new line characters. Now, is everybody clear on that? Okay. And so now, you guys, check this out. So that's the constructor. Now, what's the next method? Uh, get line. Get line. Now, what, what is it? Can you tell what get line does? Can you surmise some Java uh, methods here? What do you suppose this get line does? It have, we have a local variable int i gets what? Index of. Index of yeah, in string dot index of. Now, what do you suppose that index of is? Yeah, in, okay, so. Uh, tells you where the sentinel is. Tells you where the end line is. Well, yeah, but what, which end line do you suppose? The first, Probably the first, first one. one. Yeah, the first, the first one. Is everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So I is, so in string, that's the, that's the big one, right? Yeah. And then, and then I gets the, index of the first, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's the next one do? Line in, li now line, now which one was line? That's the individual one, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it get? In string dot what? Substring. substring. Now how do you suppose, say, you, can't you tell what substring does yeah. here? It's the string between zero. Be zero and, and, yeah, yeah, okay. Is everybody clear on that? Actually the, the hmm? first line. Right? Yeah. yeah, so what that does is it extracts the first line from, from the big one and it puts it in an individual line. Okay. Are you with me? And then the big line. Takes and then the off. big line, and then the next one says in string gets in string dot substring, but now what do you suppose this I plus I one is? If you give it one parameter, if you give it, it, one parameter it starts from there and takes it to the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, now, does this all make sense? Yes. Yeah, so the next time we call it. We'll so the next time we call it, it will be the next line. Yeah, we have decreased our. our yeah? And then what does it do? Line index. Sets line index to zero. So I don't want to have to draw that stuff out with the examples. I mean, you can, you, you see this, right? This is pretty straightforward. Yeah? And now, you guys, what about these others? Oh, actually, maybe we should put that on our thing here. So we have a void, so we have a get line. And by the way, this is, uh, this one's public, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't, you know, want anyone else to mess with this stuff. The only way they can mess with it is by going through here. So plus get line type void. and that's uh, no parameters and type void and then what's the next now what other we only have uh, three other methods 
Input. And now what is this one called? Input remains. Input remains. And that's Boolean. And what does it what does it check? And what what's it? By the way, what's it checking? Is it checking line? Is it checking? Uh, is it checking line or is it checking in string? string? It's checking in string. Are you with me? So that, yeah. And what is it? So that's type boolean. boolean. And how does it work? Can you tell? I think it tells you whether or not you have to keep parsing, or if you've reached the end of. Yeah, in, there's a there's a length method, mm -hmm. right? And so in string dot length not equal to zero if input remains, right? Now do you see, why did we have to do those two bash ends? To make sure that what? There was something. That that last line, you know, the in string dot length. Can't equal zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now, and now what, and, and now what does advanced input do? Oh, by the way, what does advanced input return? Yeah. And and what does Yeah, and it returns a care. So which character does it return? The one that the line index is at. Right. Yeah, okay. So line in, and not only does it return the one at line index plus plus uh, at line index, then after it returns that one, what does it do to line index? Plus plus. Yeah? So it's ready to get the next. And then what? And now here's the one that we really need. Backup input. Backup input. And it's all backup input does is what? Line index. Line index minus minus. Makes sense. So we can go whoosh, back here. Okay, so backup input plus backup input. And that's void. And that does our little parsing trick that we need in order to take care of this. 47B situation, yeah, and it's very common. This, this is uh, this is all very standard uh, parsing techniques, you know, le lexical analysis. Okay, all right, and here's a couple of screenshots that we already demoed for you. So there's, you know, are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's take a look at the program. Okay, so uh, you know. Main window frame, input panel, label text area, boolean, uh, button, pan, uh, button, J button, button, setup, blah, 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 okay? All that's good. Are we good? Now let me see. Combine this stuff. Public static void, create and show GUI. There's our figure, captions and stuff. And then um, uh, create and show GUI, yeah? Okay, here we go. Action performed. Now let's take a look at action performed. So this is the very top level. Okay, now um, you guys, here is um, here we're going to use. Here we need a, a Java concept. In Java, all objects are reference variables. In Java. All objects are, quote, reference variables. Have we, have we, you know, I, sometimes I forget whether we've talked about this before. I don't think so. Reference variables? Reference variables? Okay, so here's the concept. Because you guys have all learned C++ before, there is an interesting, oh, those of you who are in paradigms have probably heard this before. In Java, there are no pointer types. On the other hand, what, what, what are we saying? Everything is a pointer. These are equivalent to pointers. So let's put parentheses, equivalent, equivalent to pointers. C++ pointer. Yeah. Yeah, there is no pointer type yeah, so in Java. Equivalent to C++ pointers. All right. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. So, and uh, yeah. So in Java, all objects are reference variables. In other words, they are equivalent to C++ pointers. So now let's take a look at, at what happens at this top level. <clears throat> okay. First of all, what's the very first line here in action performed? In buffer, Q 
capital I in buffer, that's the class. And then lowercase i in buffer gets new what? In new in buffer and then what? Text, text area dot get. get text. So is everybody with me on that? So get text gets that whole text, passes it to the constructor for the buffer, and that buffer sets that to that in string variable, uh, to, the in, to the in string attribute. Are you with me? But now here, you guys, here's the point. Now watch this. The point is that here in our, here what we have is we have a variable called in buffer. Now here's the picture. In buffer. In buffer is a reference variable which is like a pointer. So what this in buffer does is it points to a new buffer. Now what were the attributes of the buffer? What is in this big buffer? There. There's in string and a line and a line index. Yes. Are you with me? So this would be, let's, what was the first string? 40, uh, 70. Yeah, well, uh, let's, so here's, so here's in, in, in string is, in string has the value, what was it, 40, what was that string? Wasn't it like here? Here, oh yeah, here is, so it'd be something like, here is blah, 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 right? And then there's also a line, Right? And that doesn't have anything in it yet. And also there's a line index. Line index. Are you with me? And that starts off to be... Did that start off to be... Zero? I don't think it has anything yet, maybe. Yeah. In the constructor, right? Okay, is it, is it... So this is pointing to this stuff. Are you with me? And now what does it say? Now what does this say? It says tokenizer what? T, T gets what? New, New tokenizer, but what's it passing? An in buffer. So now look, so here's T. Are you with me? Now what is T? A token. I know, but in Java it's an, it's an object. But in, in Java what are all objects? Pointers. They're pointers. So this T is a reference to a tokenizer. Are, are you with me? Mm -hmm. so, what to, so it's pointing to a big tokenizer. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But look you guys, what is it giving the tokenizer? As a parameter in its parameter list, what is it giving it? An in buffer. An in buffer. Well, actually, which in buffer? It's giving it this in buffer. So let's skip over to the to here, let's see what oh, the yeah. let's see what the tokenizer has. Let's flip over here to figure 7.31. What does the tokenizer have in it? Just it has a private in buffer B. And what is its, what is its constructor? constructor? Just the in buffer gets. B gets the in, buffer. the in buffer that got passed. So here's the point that I want, here's the figure that I want you to remember that we'll start it with next time. Inside this tokenizer, there is a buffer called B. Are you with me? And what is this B? It's a reference variable. Are you with me? And what is it? And, and what? And what? 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 It points because this value got this value. This reference gets this reference. What is what is this B doing? It's pointing to this same buffer that got established before. So this is, is everybody clear? This is the picture. This is a really important picture because conceptually. This is a really important picture conceptually because what it shows is how our tokenizer uses this buffer that got allocated in the main program. We pass a reference to this. So anytime we do B dot anything in the tokenizer, what are, what, which, which one are we refer we're referring to? This one th that, that got set up in the main program. Now does everybody understand this? And there's, there's more attributes here. There's more attributes here. But does everybody understand that when that the constructor of the tokenizer gets this, that makes this B point to the same buffer that has already been initialized with that text. And now what can this tokenizer do? It can do B dot what? What can, this to what can the tokenizer do? It can execute what? B dot what? Get line. Get line. It can execute B dot what? 
input, input remains. It can say if b dot input remains. And every time it's doing b dot input remains, what's it doing? Whoa, if input remains up here. Yeah. From what, are you with me? And it can do b dot advance input. It can do b dot, yeah? So that's the main, that's, that's the big idea of how, of how this buffer, how this buffer works, how the input buffer works, and how we have all of these, um, these methods that help us in the parse. So the tokenizer is, is going to be using those methods um, from this buffer that got its input values by its constructor. And this is standard practice. This is, but you know, in order, in order to understand how this works, it's, it's all based on this, this concept. In Java, all ob objects are reference variables. In other words, this, you don't say pointer to, you don't, you know, we didn't say in buffer star. Right. But that's automatic in Java because in, are you with me? That's automatic in Java. There are no pointer types. There is no star in Java, but Everything, every object in Java is really a pointer underneath. So that's, as C++ programmers, that's how you think of it. Right. And so this is like pointer, you know, when you, when you get, give this pointer to this, that means this is pointing to the same thing. That pointed to, and that got allocated earlier. Okay? Good deal. So what we'll do uh, tomorrow is we'll see the details of how this all works. All right.